Welcome back to FNTV at MWC 25. I'm Steve Saunders. Let's talk about security. Well, with me, I have Darren Anstey from NetScout and Mitch Wagner from Fierce Network. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, so, Darren, have any of the recent uh, security attacks or threats uh, caused NetScout to change the way that it is protecting its customers' networks? Um, yeah, I mean, we tend to specialise in the area that I focus on in distributed denial of service attacks. And mm. we've seen a lot of change um, in those attacks over the past couple of years, more sophistication, um, more persistent attacks from, you know, uh, nation state affiliated adversaries, those kinds of things, mm. targeting a broader range of organizations on a broader range of endpoints. Mm. So that has really driven us to focus on automation, on threat intelligence, on how we use AI in both of those things. Um, and it's also driven us to kind of spread the way in which we can do this across both wireline and mobile environments because we're seeing those same problems kind of um, move in parallel now. Mm. Is AI playing a role uh, in, in, in the products and the way that you to protect those networks against denial of service attacks? Yeah, the way that we build our threat intelligence um, is very um, uses a lot of AI. So we gather um, a, a kind of a unique data set from about 500 service providers, a couple of thousand enterprises from all around the world, wow. and then we refine that into a set of actionable intelligence that we push back to our customers every three hours. And that intelligence um, allows them to understand where attacks are coming from right now so that they can more proactively detect and then mitigate those attacks. Mm. And then we're also building AI into the products themselves around being able to uh, analyze attack traffic, figure out whether configuration changes are needed to deal with attacks as they evolve, those kinds of things. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's really interesting. But aren't the attackers also using AI? They are. So what you see um, in all kinds of cyber threats today is that there is this kind of constant um, adaption where mm. we put new defenses in place, the attackers adapt to circumvent those defenses and so on and so forth. Mm. I think um, more recently what has happened is that that whole cycle has accelerated and that's why the drive towards automation, the drive towards using more intelligence, the drive towards using AI has kind of become essential in the way that the products operate. Right. But um, yeah, so. It's a sort of game of AI one-upmanship, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, but it's it's AI in terms of the automation side of things. That's how attackers <laughs> tend to be using it, or they are, although they are using it now to evade things yeah. like capture. Um, but it's very much the automation. It's not the kind of Gen AI that you see being mm -hmm. talked about in some places now. That's really interesting. Are you hearing anything on uh, on AI security issues, Mitch? Yeah, AI is making everything move faster than human humans can react to. Right. It, it takes AI to defend the network, to, mm -hmm. to, to detect the attacks as they come in and react to them fast enough to defend. Um, and yes, attackers are using AI too. So yeah. it's becoming a war of, the, war of the machines against the machines. Yeah, yeah. that sounds ominous to me. It's ringing various yeah, yeah, worrying, yeah. worrying alarm bells for me. Uh, but uh, Darren, have you always used AI in your products or is it a relatively new thing? We've used machine learning for mm. a long time. So if you look at the way that our products analyze internet traffic, detect anomalies within internet traffic, that is machine learning fundamentally. Mm. Um, we've recently started engineering AI in because of the need to automate and automate the way in which we refine intelligence and analyze traffic. So, you know, that, that's a relatively recent introduction for us over the last, I suppose, two, three years. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, we're at a, a mobile show. We're at a show mm -hmm. where, which is mainly the cornerstone of it is 5G, isn't it? Yep. Does 5G present uh, any unique challenges as far as the security yeah. biome? Um, again, coming back to our area of DDoS, yes. So traditionally, most of our customers deployed our products across their wireline networks and their backbone networks. They were looking for attacks coming in from the rest of the internet or attacks coming from their wireline subscribers. And mm -hmm. those attacks have escalated as edge connectivity speeds have grown. So as people have moved from you know, ADSL to fiber to DOCSIS 4, those kinds of things, the volumes of bad traffic increase you know, very dramatically. Right. What we've seen is that as fixed wireless access um, accelerates around the world onto 5G services, um, a lot of the bad infrastructure that was on wireline is moving onto mobile as well. So compromised consumer IoT, exploitable CPE, mm. those kinds of things, gaming related DDoS attacks. They're now coming to mobile networks with fixed wireless access services. So 
a lot of our customers are asking us for help in identifying those attacks, mm. in managing those attacks. And what we've done is extend the solutions that we have for the wireline world into mobile. Mm. And we've done that by borrowing technology from another division of NetScout, which is all about service assurance within mobile networks, where wow. the we're the market leader. So we've kind of taken that tech, added it to our security tech, and that gives us the visibility that we need mm. there. That's really interesting. Mitch, um, Cisco recently brought out a report which said that uh, security was the number one concern of its customers um, when, deploying, uh, uh, when deploying AI. And do, do you think that that's the number one, one concern for, for customers? Or, or do you think staying in business is the number one concern for customers? I think uh, staying in business is, yeah. is clearly requires security. Mm. So, yeah. it's so it's one, one and, or the other, one yeah. And the same. But have you seen much at the show about uh, security? Yeah, 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 we're seeing we're seeing quite a bit. Right. There is it, it's it's uh, the threats are constant and people can't take security for granted. They have to be sure to be proactive and stay right. on top of attacks before they come in. Yeah. It, so it's a pretty consistent theme across everybody you're talking to. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how does, you know, a, a lot of companies like Cisco will, will say, "Oh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll provide security for you." How does Netscout differentiate itself in that? Is it around this speciality of DDoS? Um, it's around a couple of different specialities. Yeah. So DDoS being one of them, um, you know, we have a unique um, capability there. We are the market leader there. All of the service providers on the, the vast majority of them around the world use our solutions. And that gives us mm. a unique perspective on how threats are evolving and how to deal with those threats. Yeah. So that's one side. Um, the other kind of unique that we have is that Netsco has 40 years of deep packet inspection experience. So that's traditionally been used in our service assurance products, but increasingly now we're seeing our customers using that in security because mm. we have an ability through something called smart data to provide very rapid access into packet forensics, into analytics based on packet forensics, all of those kinds of things. And that's obviously very important when you're trying to triage a threat, when you're trying to understand what's going on mm. within you know, a next gen data center to really get to the bottom of where the problems might be, where the dependencies are. But you're primarily involved in the defense of your customers' networks. Can you also see where the attacks are coming from specifically? Um, when it comes to the DDoS side of things, mm. yeah, you can identify the source IP addresses that they're mm. coming from, but that doesn't necessarily tell you where yeah. the attacks were originated, because it might be a bot, it might be an open proxy, it might be that the there traffic is being reflected to, from to something, hide. so yeah. yeah. Is there any progress being made on uh, attacking the problem at source, actually finding the organizations, uh, individuals or even governments that are responsible for this stuff and getting them to knock it off? <laughs> so again, I think- I mean, that wouldn't be terribly good for your business. Yeah, well, there are, I, well, you say that, but there are two parts to that. Mm. Um, so in, in, in terms of takedown of the kind of the DDoS services that are out there and botnets that are out there, yes, that is happening, but it tends to have very transient impact. Yeah. You know, something else will take their place very, very quickly. Mm. Where we are starting to focus more is on what we call DDoS suppression. So if you look at things like um, DDoS historically, it's been all about defending a target. Now we're seeing a lot of eyeball networks, so um, networks have a lot of subscribers on them. They are becoming more concerned about the volumes of attack traffic coming from their own subscriber bases because that attack traffic can have an impact within their networks. Mm. So they're becoming more interested in being able to detect the top offenders within their networks so that they can do something about that. Mm. And we're adding capability into our products to enable them to do that so mm. that they can see who those top offenders are, what they're doing, who are they targeting, so that they can get on top of that problem. And that does tend to suppress the problem more at source. Um, why do people launch DDoS attacks? Is it just to be annoying? No, uh, unfortunately not. Um, so there are a number of different motivations behind mm. DDoS. Um, in terms of volume of attacks, gaming is probably still the number one. You'd be mm. astonished at how much gaming-related DDoS there is going on out mm. there. Um, it tends to be fairly low level. There's just a lot of it. Um, the second one is probably geopolitics. So everyone has seen in the media the yeah. attack campaigns around Ukraine, around Russia, around Israel, mm. around anybody that came down on one side or the other of any of those countries right. over the last couple of years. 
Um, what's less apparent is that pretty much any election now, any protest anywhere in the world in any country, probably has some level of DDoS associated with it. So geopolitics is a huge motivator for DDoS um, now. Wow. Uh, it's a big, big driver. And in the current geopolitical situation, yeah, I think... it's not getting any better. You're going to have your hands full, but yeah. a good business for Netscout, and we're yeah. happy about that. You guys have been doing this for a while, so yeah. a, a very trusted name in the communications industry. Mitch, Darren, thank you so much. This was really interesting. Thank, thank you. for the opportunity. Thank you.